Law Warrior Mercenaries. Korsakov's Cossacks. Debt of Blood. Korsakov's Cossacks began as a regiment of native-born mech warriors and pilots on the Capellan planet of Tikhonov. According to rumour, the regiment's commander, Nikolai Korsakov, spent a great deal of time in the company of Romano Lau on Siam before the outbreak of the Fourth Succession War. In fact, many observers speculate that he was one of the many lovers Romano kept before the arrival of Sent Shang on Siam. After Shang's arrival, Korsakov began spending more time on Tikhonov, where his mercenary regiment was employed by Earthworks Limited to guard its battle mech production facilities. How Stavian forces hit the world fast and hard in 3028, determined to capture Tikhonov early in the Davian campaign against the Capellan Confederation. As the overwhelming Davian forces engaged the Lao defenders on Tikhonov, the Cossacks remained on the Earthworks grounds and stayed neutral. When the battle ended, control of Tikhonov passed to Davian hands. In recognition of the Cossacks' neutral stance during the invasion, Tikhonov's new rulers allowed the Cossacks to remain in Earthworks' employ on the planet. Though Korsakov's decision had saved the Cossacks from near certain destruction, it earned Korsakov and his regiment the wrath of Romano Lau, who viewed the mercenaries in action as a personal betrayal. Weeks later, that wrath culminated in firebombing attacks against Korsakov and several Cossack officers. Korsakov would escape with severe burns to his face and arms, but the officers and their families died in the blasts. Though Romano denied any complicity in the bombings, the Cossacks harboured no doubt of her involvement, and swore a blood oath to avenge themselves against her some day. When Romano died before they could fulfil this vow, they transferred their hatred to her son and heir, Sun Tzu. Command Though Nikolai Korsakov retired in 3055, he donned his uniform the following year to join the Cossacks at Solaris, presumably to speak with Tormano Lau concerning possible employment by the Free Capella movement. Apparently, nothing came of these talks, as the Cossacks returned without engaging in any combat, and the old colonel went back to his retirement. Mikhail Korsakov, a son from a liaison in Nikolai's youth, led the unit now and shares his father's hatred for Sun Tzu Lau. It was Mikhail who first proposed that the Cossacks enter the service of Candace Lau of the St. Ives Compact, an assignment that has placed the unit in an excellent position to strike at Sun Tzu should the Chancellor engage in any military adventurism. Available Forces and Organisation Though the Cossacks have increased to two regiments during the past 30 years, they stubbornly cling to their old ways and do not employ independent command units, as do most of the large mercenary commands. The lack of such command units doesn't appear to have diminished their fighting capability, however. During practice exercises with the St. Ives Lancers, they've proven themselves the equals of veteran St. Ives troops. Generally, the Cossacks are considered reliable troops. Against Capellan forces, however, they're classified as fanatical. The Cossacks have shown special affection for battle mech designs produced on Tikhonov. Battle mechs produced in the areas surrounding Tikhonov and the St. Ives Compact rate next on the Cossacks list of preferred machines. The mercenaries, however, shun designs produced on Cyan, Capella, or any pro-Confederation world. Support During the Cossacks' close association with Earthworks, the mercenary unit were able to maintain a large tech support base thanks to their arrangement under which the corporation would lease the services of Cossack techs when the regiment didn't need them. Most of these technicians followed the unit to the St. Ives Compact, giving the Cossacks a 90% support rating. For a unit that has spent the majority of its career as a corporate garrison force, the Cossacks have managed to assemble impressive transportation assets. The unit's six overlords can carry the entire Cossack force, and the unit also owns two older Invader-class jump ships, capable of transporting all six Cossack dropships. Colours and Insignia the Cossacks paint their machines a flat, rust-red colour. Traditionally, each mech warrior gives his battle mech a name, which is painted across the back of the machine in Russian. The force insignia is a Cossack horseman riding out of a golden circular field, wielding a flaming sabre. The emblem is painted across the right torsos of unit battle mechs, and the left fuselage sides of aerospace fighters. First Korsakov's Cossacks, Warriors of the Steppes. 
When Davian forces struck Tikhonov in 3028, the Cossacks deployed in an area surrounding the Earthworks limited production facilities, and promptly repelled a handful of Davian recon units. Within minutes, the Tikhonov defence forces requested aid from the Cossacks, a request that Colonel Korsakov denied. Apparently, the strength of the Davian invaders had convinced them that the Cossacks could very well be destroyed if they joined in the Capellan effort to repel the assault. And, since the Cossacks were under contract to Earthworks rather than to the Capellan Confederation, the mercenary unit was not legally obligated to help the defence forces. Unfortunately for the Lao defenders, the communications between Korsakov and the Tikhonov defenders were intercepted by the invading force, whose commander ordered his troops to disregard the factory entirely. As the invaders concentrated on routing the Lao garrison and driving it off-world, Earthworks ordered the Cossacks to stand down, acknowledging Davian control of the world. In the end, the planet's new rulers allowed the Cossacks to remain on Tikhonov in the employ of Earthworks for another five years. The Cossacks were en route to Coventry for a one-year garrison post with Coventry Metalworks when the Jade Falcons hit Trell 1. For two years, they remained on Coventry guarding the important metalworks. Then, after signing the Truce of Tukiat, the Cossacks made their way back to Tikhonov and another Earthworks garrison contract. In late 3054, Mikhail Korsakov prevailed on his father to accept a contract with the St. Ives Compact to increase the Cossacks' chance of engaging Capellan forces. After a one-year lapse in 3056, they resumed station in the compact, and have remained there ever since. Dragoons rating A+. Officers. Lieutenant Natalia Hestroy commands 2nd Battalion's Lightlands, acknowledged as the regiment's best scouting force. She's known to be romantically involved with Mikhail Korsakov and has used this influence to avoid promotion, so she can remain with her lance. Tactics. Mikhail Korsakov is a competent tactician, but is more likely to react to tactics of an enemy than to seize the initiative. When he does initiate an offensive, he generally sends a large portion of his command charging toward the enemy head-on. So far, the heavy weight of the First Cossacks and their skilled use of concentrated fire has enabled him to succeed with such crude tactics. The First Cossacks specialise in open field battle. They prefer to keep moving at all times, and switch units on and off the front line. These tactics keep their enemies off balance, and unable to make multiple concentrated fire attacks against the Cossack's battle mechs. Hestroy has the ability to run her battle mech into heavy forest or behind small hills and disappear. Enemy units might know she's in the area, but will likely find her only by tripping over a spider. This hide and ambush routine can frustrate even the most professional warriors. She also employs this strategy when leading her lance, making the small unit very dangerous for unsuspecting opponents. First, Korsakov's Cossacks. Regiment, Veteran, Reliable. CO, 1st Battalion, Colonel Mikhail Korsakov. XO, 2nd Battalion, Lieutenant Colonel Dmitry Brenyev. 1st Company, 2nd Lance, Lieutenant Natalia Hestroy. 3rd Battalion, Major Boris Panchenko. The 1st Cossacks are considered a heavy regiment, though they field an equal mix of assault, heavy, and light designs. 2nd Battalion is the regiment's lightest unit, while 1st Battalion has two full companies of assault machines. The regiment is 30% upgraded. True Flight, Wing Veteran Reliable, Wing Commander Major Simone Platt. True Flight's 18 heavy fighters often engage in head-on attacks that can break the nerve of less experienced pilots. The Wing's aerospace fighters are considered 20% upgraded, and are divided into arrow, dart, and sling squadrons, each using an insignia of a mounted Cossack wielding the squadron weapon of their namesake. Second Korsakov's Cossacks, Rubinsky's Light Horse. When Captain Gregor Rubinsky retired from the AFFC at age 60, he felt he still had several good years left and something to offer. When he returned to his homeworld of Tikhonov in 3035, he assembled the core battalion of Rubinsky's Light Horse Regiment. Though most of Rubinsky's recruits were retired or semi retired mech warriors serving in the new Earthworks corporate garrison force, all of them owned battle mechs. After additional recruitment on nearby Tigris and New Hessen, Rubinsky assembled a second battalion, and after promoting himself to colonel, he negotiated the unit's first contract with Earthworks Limited. When the Cossacks returned to Tikhonov for rest and refit in 3038, they found an efficient veteran force whose heritage and fighting style mirrored their own. Impressed by this new mercenary unit, Nikolai Korsakov approached Rubinsky. A month later, Rubinsky's light horse became part of the Cossacks' official TO&E. 
As part of the deal, Nikolai used the Cossack war chest to bring Rubinsky's regiment to full strength. Dragoons rating B+. Officers. Colonel Gregor Rubinsky died of a massive coronary in 3046. Up until the very end, he was an active and happy man, a veteran mech warrior, an excellent trainer of new members to the light horse. After his death, his son Marco accepted command of the unit and continued to shape the light horse into a feared battlefield unit. High attrition rates caused by the older members' deaths also reduced the unit's experience rating and nearly made it regular, but Marco diligently trained new Cossacks and the unit has maintained its veteran rating. In recent years, Marco has been grooming his son, 28-year-old Tamas, to take command of the Cossacks. Though Marco is in fine health, many observers believe that the recent estrangement of his youngest daughter, who left the second Cossacks for employment with a small mercenary command, may prompt him to retire soon. If necessary, Lieutenant Colonel Raymond Lee Tran will assume command until Colonel Korsakov believes Tamas is ready. Tamas Rubinsky has already spoken about adopting independent command units and has voiced his desire to see armoured units attached to the 2nd Cossacks. His proposals have largely fallen on deaf ears so far, but some recent simulator battles, in which he demonstrated the effectiveness of fast armoured units leading a light horse charge and wheel, have garnered some attention. Tactics the second Cossacks prefer open spaces where they can use their battle mech speed to their greatest advantage. They like to rush forward, wheeling off to one side and then rushing forward again and wheeling off again. These old-fashioned cavalry tactics have proved devastating in combat, as the charge of the faster machines up front can intimidate an opponent, while the rear machines provide deadly fire support. 1st Battalion's 2nd Company is also adept at closely coordinated assaults, and Captain Rabinsky has a knack for timing and movement. The appearance of his company behind enemy lines has been known to throw less experienced enemies into disarray and tie up supporting elements of more battle-wise opponents on guard against such manoeuvres. Breskin's Pegasi, two squadrons, elite, reliable. Wing commander, Major Stanislaus Breskin. Hammer squadron and Sickle squadron are both composed of medium-weight fighters. Major Breskin is very particular about his pilots, which has kept the unit from attaining full wing strength. However, the fighters are 40% upgraded, which compensates for this small number. The squadron insignia consists of a Cossack riding a winged horse and carrying a hammer or sickle. 